We're back with Alan Jacob talking about men and fatherhood. Our next topic has to do with a study about a condition we've really only heard women suffer from, postpartum depression. First off, did any of your wives suffer from postpartum depression? You know, I think there was a little, uh, I, I don't know that it was a, a clinical case, but I think after each child we, we had uh, two together and that uh, I think there was a little something going on. Yeah. I don't know if it was ever officially diagnosed as such. Yeah. It's a tough time. I, and I don't see him. We didn't have an official diagnosis of that too, but I mean, you have to think about, I, we're going to talk about men and how, what men go through, but let's just be really clear about this. Right. Women carry the load. I remember talking yes, to my wife. Literally. Like, quite literally. I remember right. talking to my right. wife. When, yeah, let's talk about women. Especially because our wives are watching. That's right. I remember in the hospital, my wife was in labor, and I was like, you know, I have a headache. I'm going to lay down for a second. She goes, no, you're not. <laughs> what did she, she told you to man up. That's very you? true. That's very, and maybe not in such a polite way. <laughs> I deserved it. And I think that, uh, you know, let's remember that this is, uh, what women go through is extraordinary. It's, but it is interesting to, to think about and talk about. This is something that uh, affects us all holistically as a family. Right. Yeah. I mean, my, when my girls were born, uh, Ilya and Ariana, you, you know, they were... Uh, premature. Um, they were in the hospital for weeks. Oh, wow. Um, and it was an incredibly difficult time. We didn't know if they would actually get through uh, at that time. Uh, my wife did have postpartum depression, but the main the memory I have is of just trying to be the be the guy, just trying to right. hold things together while she is, you know, in pieces. Yeah. Uh, it, so, uh, you know, I guess I'm, what I'm trying to say is, I, I don't know how there's space for you as a guy. Well, I think you, culturally, beyond just being kind of trying to be supportive of the family uh, and of your wife, who yeah. has been, as you rightly point out, has been, is going through so much. And I think even if you are going through something, I think culturally we're expected to be the strong ones, to right. hold everything together. Uh, and and well, I think we'll as we exp uh, explore this. You know, I, I wonder if maybe it's the wrong, ter it's not maybe the correct term, maybe it's, it, it's obviously something, but maybe it's not this clinically postpartum depression, we'll find out, right. but I, I just really find this kind of fascinating. Yeah, it is a fascinating topic. And, you know, what we want to talk about is that there was this recent study. It came out of the Journal of American Medical Association Pediatrics. It found that postpartum depression in dads is actually a real thing. And we have got a story about it. One dad, he also happens to be, believe it or not, a pediatrician and how this right. dad discovered that he himself suffered from postpartum depression. Watch this. In 2013, David and Stacey Levine were overjoyed when they learned they were expecting their first child. When I found out that we were having a boy, I was very excited. I was hoping to have a boy. I am a male, so therefore I felt like at least with one, I would have some idea of what to do. Um, I had, I, we were just excited the whole way through. Later that year, the couple welcomed their son, Zachary, into the world. But just days later, after leaving the hospital, David began experiencing sudden mood swings and dark thoughts. I would just say they were of the homicidal, suicidal variety. It felt like he was always crying. And, you know, I'm not my child's doctor. Um, and I mentioned this to my child's doctor, and she said, Dave, he's, he's, he's two days old. This is okay, this is, this is a baby. Stacy remembers her husband becoming increasingly irritable around their son. He would say he doesn't love me. When, he, when, I, when I pick him up, he cries, but when he's with you, he doesn't cry. And again, I would say, he's a baby, I'm with him more. Maybe he's more comfortable in my arms, but there's nothing wrong with him. And I couldn't, but I couldn't convince him of that. A few months in, a breaking point came. You're supposed to cherish these little babies. What they don't tell you is that not everybody does, and at least not in the very beginning. And so there's the guilt, the shame, and all that stuff just ramped up into one. Um, and then you just, you know, some men crack in different ways. Shortly after, David, a pediatrician himself, checked in with a therapist looking for answers. After I spoke to the therapist for the first time and we went over my history, she's like, this is just because you're a dad doesn't mean it's not postpartum depression. Now, I think mm. that's, that's the important thing. I think we all deal with these things differently and recognizing that you need help is the first step. We should point out, you know, this is uh, mostly this is uh, women here in the, in the audience with us, uh, lots of moms, and, and people will really reacting as that uh, tape was playing out with huge sympathy, actually. It's a real sense that there is a space for this yep. conversation. Absolutely.
We are back with Dr. David Levine, a pediatrician who says he suffered from postpartum depression shortly after the birth of both of his children. We're also joined by Dr. Catherine Berndorf, a psychiatrist and co-founder of the Motherhood Center, which focuses on pregnant and postpartum mums and families. And Erica Cheng, assistant professor of pediatrics at Indiana University School of Medicine, who worked on the study we've all been discussing. Uh, David, <coughs> what? Were the, what was the point at which you realised that... Because we all know there are pressures when you have children. Yeah. When you realised this wasn't just the kind of pressures that uh, most dads uh, suffer from. Um, I had taken off two weeks uh, to be with uh, my wife when my son was like two, three weeks old. And that's when I started to feel something that was strange, um, as in the piece they mentioned. Started getting some strange visions in my head about my son. Visions? Yeah. Uh, oh, what kind of visions? Like I had mentioned, so it eventually clarified into, like I said, the more homicidal, suicidal variety, where whenever my son would really start crying, which I felt was all the time, um, when I was at my most stressed, the vision, like it, it was like a story, and the story would eventually, it was one part of the story and would get longer and longer, and the ending was not very good. So you're a doctor, I mean, you're a pediatrician. Yeah. Um, you know, what are the thoughts that are going through your head when you're having these type of homicidal thoughts about your own child? Did you say, I gotta seek treatment immediately? Did you say, there's gotta be something wrong? Right. What went through your head? Well, a man, and men don't usually seek help. Uh, there's and, a lot of stigma associated with this. Right. Absolutely, and uh, as I was mentioning, just like you're supposed to be the rock, you're supposed to be there for them, and when you're not feeling that way, you don't know really how to feel. Mm -hmm. Um, so, no, I didn't actually seek help in the beginning. Um, I knew that, but what, what helped as being a pediatrician is I did know something was wrong. I Googled it like anybody else would. Um, but there's, there wasn't much online about men having depression with their kids. Um, I found a little snippets here and there, but I didn't do very much about it. Um, I just sort of felt like, you know, i got to get through these two weeks, and I will go back to work, and everything will be okay. Wow. So, Dr. Berndorf, is, is this unusual? I mean, is this something that you're finding more and more men are actually admitting to, to suffering from? Well, one, I think it's amazing that you did and you got the help you did. Um, so. <laughs> um, well, at the Motherhood Center, the name implies the motherhood, right, mm -hmm. that it's about women. But what we're finding is that once the women are treated, we're seeing the partners collapse. And it may even be that it's happening at the same time, but the moms, thankfully, are getting the recognition that they need because postpartum depression has not been talked about very openly. So I applaud all of you for bringing this to the fore. It's really important, so it's also happening in dads. Uh, Erica, talk to us about the study, a little bit more about the study. And I mean, did you know that there were cases similar to David's out there? What was the impetus for going out and actually looking at it? And then what are the numbers for men compared to women? Sure. So we know so much about, or we know a lot about um, depression in moms and new moms and how that's a period of vulnerability for mothers. And so we did the study to shed light on the challenges that new dads might be facing. Uh, we did a survey to parents that brought their kids into pediatric visits. Um, so either parent, whoever was there, they got a survey to assess their depressive symptoms. And we found that 4.4% of fathers and 5% of mothers were um, depressed during this time frame. Pretty similar. Similar rates for men and for women, were yes. Were you surprised by that? We were. I think that um, this was a small survey done in pediatric health clinics in Indianapolis, so it's possible that the rates of mm -hmm. depression might be different in different places. But um, I think it did show that fathers are um, showing signs of depression more often than maybe we think. But in women, I, is, is it triggered more hormonally, and then it, 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 it's a different kind of trigger? Because I'm sure there are a lot of women who are sitting there and going, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> how is this possible? Well, parent, becoming a parent is a life, a huge life stressor. Yes. I think that affects parents. Um, and we don't face that enough. We don't right. really talk about that right. enough, right? Right. So I think that there are relationship changes between um, husbands and wives. I think that there are a lot of sleepless, sleepless nights, a lot of sleep deprivation happening, financial pressures, um, all sorts of societal pressures that happen that can affect men as well as women during this time, this time period. What are some of the, the, the warning signs that if, if your, your partner... You, you might be exhibiting that you said you need to get some help. Well, it, it's a little bit different for men and women, right? So you ask the question, is it hormonal? It is probably more hormonally based, although we don't know that for sure in women. Um, men also have hormonal changes, but it's a situational change, right? It's an identity shift, like a crisis, if you will. Um, and I think we, women tend to internalize. They feel more sad and guilty and hopeless and tearful. 
men tend to externalize. Again, these are generalizations, sure. but but like David said, he got very angry. Yeah, I, I external. I fit the bill with that. I mean, men tend to be more destructive and externalizing, and we don't tend to do it the right way. So you know, there's, you know, whether it's drugs and alcohol, it's um, you know avoidance, it's working later hours, it's you know we just don't have. We don't have good outlets for how we're feeling. Mm -hmm. And so it's, especially in my case, it came out in forms of anger. Um, anger at my son, anger at feeling that he was rejecting me, that he didn't love me for you know, whatever reasons I felt at that moment. Um, and it continued on with my second child where there was anger again. And real quick, how are your children doing now? They're good. Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing? I'm then? doing fine. Those, it was, like they said, it's situational. It's, it's a parenting thing. And it's treatable. It yeah. is treatable. So treatable. I got right. help and I got treatment. And you got to break until they get, they're teenagers. And then it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different deal. Thank you, all. Right. Thank you all. Thank you all. Yeah. And if you'd like more information on TPD for men or women, please check out our website at todaycock.com. Megan Today. We'll be right back. Hello Today fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives.